you should just be proud of who you are. If you're transgender, be, be transgender. It's, it's okay. Be proud of that. You know, and that's why people have called me out on this because of the way that transgenders have used intersex along the way, calling me a liar. Just Hey everybody. I got another one. <laughs> I'm so excited to have this beautiful, amazing person on today. So uh, before we move forward, I just want to uh, thank everybody for watching the channel and really giving me great insight into other guests I can bring on, as well as really following me, helping me get my you know follows up and commenting. Comments are amazing, and you know I hear you all, and I wa I watch and I read everything. So thank you so much. So that being said, we I have Emma today, and Emma is an amazing, beautiful person I met on online which I seem to meet everybody <laughs> and um, her story is fascinating um, so I don't want to speak for her and I want her to introduce herself so Emma please first off thanks Emma for joining me today it means a lot to me and um, so if you could just kind of just tell us who you are and why you're joining me today sure well first of all thank you for having me I got to see a lot of your content and it really inspired me and and I think that we both have kind of the same message which is why I'm doing a lot of what what I'm doing today but my name is Emma. I was born in Bristol, Connecticut in 1978. So I'm 43 years old and I moved to Florida shortly after 1989. And I have been here ever since. And I live here with my family, my uh, spouse and everything else. And um, I, my story basically started off the minute I was born, but I didn't know it. I was intersex. And yes, I did have a diagnosis back then, but no, nobody told me back then. So I didn't know until about my 10th grade year when I started having a couple of different things. I started having pain in my, in my nipples and I thought maybe I had breast cancer and that kind of freaked me out. The second thing is, is I was having bad ulcers and I was going through a really tough time. My parents had just got divorced. So at this particular time, I thought maybe, just maybe this was a, um, this was, uh, what do you call it? A uh, ulcer, a bleeding ulcer or something like that. So I went to the doctor. Um, at this point in time, I didn't go to the doctor until my 11th grade year. And the reason I did that is when I moved down here, they held me back a year, not because of my grades, but because of the day I was born. So I was actually 18 November 1st of uh, my junior year. So I didn't have to worry about going to my doctor and anything like that and have my parents there. And I didn't want to worry him if it was cancer. I mean, what am I going to do? Say, hey, look, I think I got cancer. Get them all worried. They just had a divorce and then come to find out something stupid. Well, guess what? It kind of was something stupid, but it was also something very important. Um, the development underneath my uh, nipples was actually my mammary glands starting to, to grow. And then they also found out through uh, ultrasounds and some other things that I had a uterus. And so when they took my chromosome level and then they took my... Um, when they took my chromosomes and then they took my uh, hormone levels, I had the hormones of a cisgender female. That was a lot of reasons why I didn't have the beards and the, and the hair and everything else that everybody else thought I was supposed to have. And that's one of the reasons I got beat up and stuff in school. The second part to that, they found out that I was a 46XXCAH chromosome intersex. And the, I didn't quite know what to do. All I knew is that I had two years left. I hadn't taken PE yet. You have to dress out. And so I, going into that locker room was going to be a little bit intimidating, especially if I had breasts. So I asked them, what can we do? And they said, well, you can take testosterone. And if you take testosterone, it will stop the, uh, the breast development. And it will also stop the, um, the uh, periods from happening since I had no way to get it out because I was altered at birth. So I did. And when I got through that, um, something just never changed. I realized that I could never go backwards. I just looked too masculine at the time. And I was like, oh my God, I destroyed myself. So I played the part. If you want to kind of understand what it's like to be me, imagine going into a Halloween a store, putting on a Halloween mask, putting on a costume, you act that person, you everything. But when you're ready to take off the mask, you can't. So now what you have to do is it's glued on there. So you have to play the part. You have to do the voice. You have to do the stances. You have to do everything. And that's what I did my entire life. Um, I could not relate to men. I could not. Um, I, I was always told, oh, dude, stop being such a chick and stuff like that. When I say things, because I thought differently, I was wired differently. And so I really had to do a lot of things. And I become, at the end of the day, I was exhausted. I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't have friends. I got beat up. So... 
I did what I did to get me through. And then when it wasn't going to change, I just decided to keep the part going. And um, I eventually married a female, um, even though I was intersex. And honestly, I'm going to, this is kind of confusing. I was never attracted to females. Okay. Mm -hmm. I could never, people tried to hook me up in school and, and all the females kept saying, you know what? That's like dating my sister or my best friend, which is really weird because they couldn't understand why. But they obviously had some type of sense of, of what who I was. And then shortly after that, um, I just kind of gave up on it. But I met, a, I met a female and I didn't necessarily fall in love with her body or her looks or anything like that. I fell in love with her heart or soul because it's honestly one of the purest forms of, of love I have ever met. And she's amazing. And so I didn't care about her gender. I just loved her for who she was. And we got married and we've been married for 23 years. However, oh, wow. if something did happen to her or if something happened um, or if we happen to get divorced for any reason, uh, I would never be with another female. I can say that much. So, wow. so that's my story. So, in a far I'm like, so far, I'm like, wow, what a story. But wait, I just want to go back for a little bit here. So when you were born, um, they, uh, they um, said you were male. Is this correct? So you lived in the male space. Is I lived right? in a male space. Yes. Okay, I did right. have both. I did have both genitals and it was surgically altered. So what I have, it's not your typical male genitals. I have no testicle, okay. but the skin was made to look like a scrotum and um, it does not do function. It does not work. At what age did they do that surgery? Pretty much yeah. right when I was born. Oh, right when you were born. So as so you how were born, would I have known? Did your, right, that's right. But then you said later on, you started getting all these kind of pain. So did your parents tell you you were intersexed or they never told Nobody you? told me and I never told anybody that I found out because I didn't know yeah. what to do with it. You know, the, the, the thing about it is, is like with things like this, when things yeah. like this happen, you find out you have cancer, something like that. The problem with it is, is that it takes a while to digest. Mm -hmm. And then me, I was more concentrated, not necessarily on my condition, but was getting through school. I mean, if I had to take PE and I had breasts growing and I had this little itty bitty thing that you had in, in between my legs, how the hell was I going to hide all this? Mm -hmm. So right. it was tough. It was oh, no, really I can't even tough. Imagine. And I, that was my main focus. So, so living as male, but you were not like a typical male. You were kind of a little bit more androgynous. Is that what you're trying to say? Like, you know, you could have yeah. asked for a female on some level. And then you find out in 10th grade because of all this stuff going on with your parents and all of that. And you go to the doctor and then they tell you you have this. But you, you didn't say anything to anybody else. You kind of kept that inside yourself. Is that correct? Yes, except for the one time I almost told my friend Amanda and um, we, I remember we were sitting outside Pizza Hut and right next to that was a gelato place. And I was like, you know, I almost, I have stomach problems so bad. It feels like I have a period. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> she goes, shut up. And I'm yeah. like, but it's, and then I was like, you know what? Nobody's ever going to believe me. And so that's kind of where I left it wow, is that nobody would believe me. And honestly, they don't, even to this day, they still don't believe me. And that's okay. Well that's ridiculous because that's your actual story. But people are crazy today. I just think people people have this idea or this entitlement that they could just say something like that to somebody. Like, I don't believe you. Well, okay. <laughs> you don't have to believe me, but it's my actual real. People say stuff like that to me too. I don't believe you. Like, I, like what? <laughs> Why would I tell you it happened to me if it didn't happen? But that that's just where we are today. You know that, Emma, and especially in the trans community. Uh, especially when intersex people enter this space, right? And we need to understand how important you are and your story is important to all of us because some people are like you, but we don't have... So I want to ask you this question because I do yeah. find it to be quite fascinating to me and I, I, I have my own thoughts about it. But so when you're born intersex like yourself and then the doctor decides to take it upon themselves to tell your parents what? Like you're intersex, we better fix this. So they fixed it when you were a baby, meaning that they fixed your genitals to look more like male genitals. Is, is that the case? I believe so. I mean, I, I was there, but I wasn't there, you know? That's but right. I believe that my parents have, I mean, you had a choice and here's the obvious yeah. choice. And this is what people don't tend to think about. Yeah. It's a lot easier to make a vaginal canal than to recreate a penis later. That's right. So I think that's kind of why they went with that. 
No, a hundred percent. And, and I, I have intersex friends and I've talked about it and been in part of, you know, been invited to groups to talk about it. And, and I, I find it to be very um, non-consensual on some level to, to do this to a child because the doctor thinks you're going to have a better life or the doctor thinks it's the right thing to do. And that's not true. And that's, you know, it's kind of similar to trans kids on some level. When we start as adults saying that we know better and this child should have these hormone blockers or surgeries, that that's not true. We don't know what this child is going to grow up. So same with you now. Now, so you fast forward and you're and you find all of this out and you're living male pretty much up to this up to what age were you living male? Up to 40. Wow. OK, so 40, you got married. Um, is it too personal if you if I ask if you have children? I don't have children. Um, mm -hmm. She can't have children. I am not able to create children. So we're kind of in the same right. situation. Right. So you don't create any sperm. Uh, uh, can I ask you about your uh, sexual health? Do, do, do you have orgasms and everything like that? No, no I'm, orgasm. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. Wow. So do you think that comes because of the surgery you had as a baby? Or is it part Maybe. of- Maybe. Mm, okay. It, it could be. I mean, there's a couple other things that are going on with me. One of the things is that when you are intersex, you can have a high- risk for things like uh, uh, muscular dystrophy and stuff like that when you're born and other types of autoimmune diseases. Well, I was born with MS and a lot of the time I cannot feel most of my body. Um, the testosterone actually made it worse. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to get off of it as fast as I could, but I just continued on with the story, basically, like I said. So um, it did make it worse. And um, so- When were you diagnosed there are times MS? I have. When, when were in you 2014, wow. you know, I kind of had, I was kind of one of those weird ones like that, like the intersex. Okay. I had yeah. like one or two symptoms, but it wasn't enough to say, oh my God, we need to test you for this. We need to test you for this. Mm -hmm. um, right. They just said, basically I had the flu, but I had the flu from 1994 until <laughs> basically 19, uh, ni uh, 2014. Wow. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. But in 2014, <laughs> I had everything. So literally, wow. um, they're like, okay, maybe we made a mistake. And we, we should have gotten you tested earlier. But it really wouldn't have mattered that much anyway. So it's like, whatever, I just let's just work on it now. And um, so that can kind of impact a lot of that too. But it has never worked. It just does not function. I, I mean, what people think I have is not what they actually, what I actually have. They're thinking of a transgender male going to female, has a fully working penis, fully working testicles, and all that other kind of stuff. And I don't have that. In fact, what they consider mine is like an elongated clit or a micro penis. So it's about that big. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not a heck of a lot you could do with that. Yeah, that's so. right. So whatever people believe, that's just ridiculous. But what I want to say is the medical world. So I have my my feelings about the medical world, how we put them on a pedestal and they're, they know every, people forget doctors practice medicine. Remember that they're practicing medicine. They don't know everything and everything changes in the medical space constantly. So the way don't, I mean, it's just weird how we put these doctors in this godlike position to say, you better change this child or they're not going to have a great life when that is completely untrue. So that, so now I want to know when, so when you chose to just dis, um, uh, decide to start living female, was that the age of 40? It was at 40, 41 um, at the time. The and what happened was yeah. I got in an injury and it actually, it actually injured the glands pro uh, producing my, my, uh, my testosterone or, or estrogen or whatever it may be. And therefore I completely stopped. Now I did kind of produce my own estrogen. So that means somewhere, I mean, uh, testosterone, which means somewhere I am producing it, which means I may have a testicle that's up inside. Yeah. But the levels were so low. Um, at even, even when I stopped, my levels are like 400, almost five uh -huh, right. for testosterone, which is uh -huh. extremely low. Uh -huh. And so it really didn't do too much, but when it stopped, it came down quickly mm -hmm. and my estrogen stayed at where it was. My estrogen was still around the one, one eighties, one nineties. And so it started to come down and then it, it got to a point where they were like wiping each other out. So it was like just barely over two, over two hundreds like 301 and it was wiping each other out. 
And then we started to realize that, you know what, I am in my 40s. I'm probably going through like a type of menopause, but we're not sure about that yet. Mm -hmm. The second part is, is that all the damage that I did to myself throughout these years, it almost damaged my ability to produce the estrogen the way it's supposed to. So there, I have to be on a small dose of, of estrogen. And that was just enough to basically knock me over the, over the, the line. I didn't need much and I still don't need much. And in fact, um, they were even considering taking me off, but they didn't want to do that completely because they didn't want to put me in like a shock of not having any type of hormones. So I think no matter what, I'm going to be on hormones the rest of my life, but I was really hopeful and really optimistic I could come off that. Um, so that was when I decided to do what I, what I decided to do. But I did tell my wife, I said, look, this is me. This is what I have. I did lie to her. I'm not, I'm not innocent. I did lie to her. I never told her, but never telling her and telling her something else is completely different too. But I never thought right. this was coming out. So right. when I said, I can fix this, I can stay exactly the way that you know me, but I have to take testosterone. I said, now the downfall to that is that it will, it will probably enhance my, my uh, testosterone again, and I will get sick. It could impact my MS again, mm. or I can let let everything go and see what happens. And she said, no, be you, just be you and let's see what happens. And what you're seeing here is the change that I made without extra hormones. So I did not take extra hormones at this point in time. I didn't take hormones until late last year. So it was a, a year and a half before I took any hormones to even do anything. And it was basically to maintain my health. It was not necessarily to transition. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily to enhance my looks. Um, and it really hasn't done much, honestly, but it has kept me from going into rages and depression and all that kind of stupid stuff that we have to go through. Well, it's not only that. We all, humans, I don't care if you're trans, intersex, whatever, we have ha hormones in our body. That's what makes us who yeah. we are. So I don't care what you are. You have to have levels that are correct, you know, estrogen and testosterone and female and male and these kinds of things. And then, so you, so now they put you on testosterone early on bef before this. It was that so, so that they could try to see, to make you more masculinized or what was the purpose of putting you on the testosterone? Masculinize me, but also stop the breast development and, and slow down the, uh, horm the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, uh, periods. Now I did still have a period, but it was so minor. And sometimes I wouldn't get it for months at a time. But then I would get like that stomach cramp again and I started bloating and then it would go away. And sometimes I didn't have it for a year. So it just, it really slowed it down. It was almost like your birth control, like sure. where there's sometimes it stops the period from happening altogether. That's kind of what it did. And um, that's where the damage is. Now I could fix this with a hysterectomy, but they would be leaving me intact down there, which is not a whole bunch of purpose either. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm in my forties and I do know that I did damage to myself, but mm -hmm. I still am claiming onto this hope that just maybe, even if there's a 1% chance that I could have a child, I want to fight for that until I know that there's absolutely no sense of it at all. You know, Excellent. that's just me. Well, no, it's your body and you get to do whatever you want to do as an adult and as somebody who has, you know, autonomy over your own body, you can be in who you want. So now living as a, so you chose to re start to live your life as a female. Is that because you felt more connected to the female space or can you elaborate a, a little bit on, on why you made that choice? I did it for a couple reasons. One of them, I did not want to go through that testosterone anymore. The second part is, is that I was living a lie my whole life because I had to, um, it, like I said, it was exhausting. I'd have to sit there and, and pose myself. Am I looking too female pose, sitting here like this? Am I doing this? Am I doing this? Am I saying this right? Am I doing this right? And it was just physically exhausting. And it was hard because I lost out on a lot of things throughout my life. You know, I never got to be nominated prom, prom queen or, or uh, homecoming queen or never got asked to a dance. I never got to experience what it was like to be with a male that I really was wired to be with. And so I have an experience as a male. Um, the only person I ever dated, I married. Um, so I don't know what it's like to date a lot of people. Right. I don't know what it's like to have that interaction with other things. So it was kind of, the, it was kind of time where I'm like, it's, I'm done pretending. I'm done being exhausted. I'm done going outside and trying to exhaust myself, just being somebody I wasn't. I wanted to just be me. 
And now that I have that opportunity, it's been a wonderful release, a wonderful free. And I highly recommend anybody that is living like that, don't do it. Be you. And it will not only improve your mental capacity, your your energy comes up. You have this new bright shining light about you. And it's 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 contagious. So definitely sure. I say always be yourself. Don't don't live the life that somebody else wants you to live like I did. Well, I mean, I I, I I think that you didn't necessarily do it because you were conscious conscious of it. I think people pushed you into it because of, of being intersex and people think that they know what's best for people just because they're intersex, right? When you're you're right. an individual, you you can't tell how you're going to be as you grow up. So it's so fat this is so fascinating to me. So then you just realize that you wanted to live in that female space because you just feel more connected to, you I mean, you just seem naturally female to me. You know, I, I want, I would love to have seen you in your male space and how did people think of you as a gay man? All the time. And yeah. like they said, they always told me to stop being such a chick and <laughs> stop doing this and stop doing that. Now, some of the things I had to do to alter my body was painful. Like one of the things I wanted rugged hands, but I had these small little, hands and and I'll show you guys this is my real hand these are my real nails these are not mm -hmm. these are not fake nails mm -hmm. so when you're a male and you got to try to look rugged you have little hands like this mm -hmm. and you get beat up people don't understand they just think that you're gay or something weird so I used to bite my nails to the point where they were bleeding and they hurt all the time mm -hmm. um my feet are also very female so I had to sit there and put on socks. I never went anywhere without socks. I never went anywhere without shoes. And if you ever had to take off my shoes, I never took off my socks. Even when I did gymnastics, I never took off socks. I just got those socks with the little stickies because <laughs> I just did not want to see that. And when I went to the pool, I, I had pool shoes. Um, this was for my protection and having people question me. Not that they probably would, but if they did, that was terrible. Um, so lots of things that I did that I had to try to make it more believable. And it was mm. tough. Now, the only thing that I do have a problem with, and I do wear these because of this reason, the testosterone cost me a little bit of hair up on the front, but somebody had blown a, foam, a can of foam insulation right here and I lost this big chunk of hair. So I wear this to try to cover that up. And I do have, I do wear makeup when I do, when I go outside because I have all these spots and white spots and black spots all over my face because I had fertilizer thrown in my face because they said I was gay. So oh, those sorry. are two things that I have to make sure that I, I cover up. Otherwise I look pretty rough. I really that do. That really makes me sad. People are disgusting and bullies. I hate, it's like the number one thing I hate in the world is bullies. Cause I got bullied too. So, you know, that breaks right? my heart. Cause I, I can just see it in my, in my head, what those people did to you. So it's, I'm sorry, it's gross, but that, that's why talking about it is so important because we need to know that, you know, if somebody who's different, you know, as a tra transsexual man and transitioning, and I pretty much try to look as male as possible, but my hands are very small and I have total, I call them lady feet. <laughs> so I'm very on board with you. I wear my socks and I'm so freaked out that people see my feet and I wear, I actually buy my shoes a half a size bigger than what they are. Because in my mind, I think people see these things when we know well that they don't it's in our own brains so right. whatever you're processing it's our own insecurities of how we look to the world and so that that does on some level really resonate with me as a person who transitioned to live male i completely you know i think there's going to be some some things that me and you have in common here but except for the fact that our stories are completely different so now you're getting off the testosterone are they adding estrogen to your diet at this point a little bit it's only one that. milligram and okay. it's once a day. Like I said, there's and not a lot, but where's the getting to this age, I'm going to need it anyway. <laughs> you are, but where's the test? Are you taking any testosterone at all? No, none. Mm -hmm. And your levels are fine. Yeah. So they, they have come down. My estrogen has come up, but it wasn't coming up perfectly the way that it should be. Okay. My testosterone dropped into the fifties where it's supposed to be. Uh, for a biological, uh, for a biological female to have. Right. So even if right. you're doing a transition from male to female, you still have to get it to those levels. So that That's way right. you're healthy, but I don't need testosterone blockers. I don't need any of that. Um, so basically all I'm on is, uh, is the progesterone for the yeah. uterus and yeah. the estrogen for my, uh, for my, basically my 
health, my body. So, so are you naturally producing you, 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 some testosterone? You are then, right? I was naturally producing it, but yeah. I think with this damage that I did to myself, it yeah. stopped it altogether. Like I said, even if, even at best, at best, it was like 400, almost 500. It was between 450 and 500 at, at all times when I was producing it myself. Do you not so need where the, any, do you, do you not need any testosterone in your body now? Is, is that I not do. making, yeah. Is it not making it? I like do, more? but I still produce enough, but it wasn't enough to make me male. Okay. So I yeah, it. I do okay. produce it. Every female produces it. Every That's male right. produces it. That's it's just right. different levels, but I didn't have to produce the amount that I needed to masculinize my body. And I never did anyway. So that's why I took the, the, the shots Got to begin it. with. So basically I'm at my levels that I was before I went into uh, and took the testosterone. Mm. But right now, the way, the way that you see me, I still need a little bit of estrogen to help me out because right. the testosterone was interacting with it so much. Even though technically it wasn't high, it was enough to just make you go crazy. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. put me on that. But like they said, I am going to be, I'm going to be 44 this month. Or in, in November. Mm -hmm. So they said, you're probably going to have to start to be on it anyways, especially because you are intersex. There's other little things coming up, right. but they didn't have, they don't have me on much. And that's okay. all I can ask for. Well, no, I think it's also good, good for you. So how is your yeah. partner in all of this? They're, they're perfectly okay with it, right? She was at first, she didn't say anything. And I'm like, okay, I just dropped a nuclear bomb on you. And you said nothing. You didn't even have a question. I said, I have questions about myself and you have nothing. So she goes, at first it was nothing. And then she goes, well, let me see what you look like. So I, I did. I let her see what I look like. And she goes, holy crap. I can't believe I'm seeing this. And she saw how I changed just by doing nothing. I didn't see a doctor. I didn't have anything else. I didn't go to a doctor to keep my, um, to keep myself looking like this. I just stopped. And before I knew it, within about six to seven months, I had small boobs, but they're big, uh, but they're small boobs, but they're mine, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. not necessarily going to be any bigger because I did take testosterone for a long time. Mm -hmm. So the damage is probably going to be as big as they're going to get, but they're mine. And, um, you know, just, just the way my body changed and my, and my, everything else, my attitude, everything got better. She goes, I cannot believe what you were hiding. And she goes, I am so glad that you are being your true authentic self. And in, um, in December, we are going to renew our vows because oh. I owe it to her and oh. we lost our wedding ring. So we had to get new wedding rings. So I'm like, let's break them in. Right. Right. Oh, so that's, so that's like a whole new start. It's a whole new start and a whole new thing. So now she's marrying the real me and I am yeah. reaffirming to her that she's still mine and I want to wow. be with her. That's so beautiful, my friend. And that's a beautiful partner, really. I mean, some people lose their partners through transition or maybe things that, you know, have kept secret yeah. for a long time and are being honest. So I just have to say that your partner's awesome. <laughs> I, I want to say that. Is. So, so, but you did. So let's talk a little bit about your, your, um, attractions towards women and men, right? So what I heard earlier on was, that you seem to be more attracted to men sexually than, than females. Yep. And yeah. so that would make sense to me on some level. And so how are you dealing with that now with your, with you and your partner? Or is that too personal of a question? No, it's not personal. I, mean, I know there's probably gonna be other people going through something like that, but for me, yeah. um, it does hurt because I wonder what if, what would have happened? And unfortunately I'm never going to know. Um, I have told her because I can't give her what she needs right. that I wouldn't blame her for being with some other guy. And the reason being is, is that it's not like she's going with another girl, you know, cause that would be to me in my eyes cheating, mm -hmm. but for her, I can't give her what she wants. And unfortunately she can't give me what I would need either. Cause we're kind of in the same position and none of us signed up for this. And technically we're, we're both straight. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of wasn't, kind of wasn't at the same time. So it's like, yeah, technically now we're considered lesbians, but before, if I had been the way I was, I would have stayed with guys. If I could have looked like, you know, female oh, right, right. and I would have pursued female. Now it's really hard because I do get hit on a lot and I don't for the life of me understand why, um, I cannot see what they see. Um, I see something different. 
Well, but that's I do you live there. You lived male for all your life, but you're very pretty, so I can see why people are attracted to you. And you, you have a great a great personality, you know. So know that. I wanted to say that before you go on, but that's why people are attracted to you. And you're living in your truthful space, so you're giving that beautiful energy out, and people are attracted to beautiful energy, not just physical. People aren't attracted are. to just physical. They're also attracted to energy. So your energy is really awesome and grounded. Well, that's what I have. I've always been that that type of a person where I, I have always wanted to help out other people and mm -hmm. screw myself. You know, if I hurt myself, <laughs> I hurt myself. It's it's no I'm more concerned about other people anyway. Yeah. And um, that's one of the reasons that I have decided to get out there and tell my story, because there are people not only like me, but transgender people, too. And, you know, they get confused where we, we may be different, but transgender and intersex are very similar in some yeah. ways, shape or form, because you yeah. still have to do, depending on which way you're going or what you're trying to do, you may have to go on some type of therapy, uh, hormone therapy. Um, if you don't want to live in, in as two different people in one, you could fix yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. same surgeries, but that's different right. experiences and that's okay. But yeah. I see a lot of people going down the road where they're getting hurt, they're being influenced, they're being conditioned, they're being groomed. And that is what I'm standing up for because it it didn't necessarily happen to me in that way, but it kind of did at the same time. And now I'm dealing with things that I can't get back. I'm dealing with, with experiences I can never have. I'm dealing with a body that is still changed that I can never fix, only at certain points certain parts of it. Although I got to tell you one thing, I am so glad I don't have an Adam's apple. <laughs> just, just put that out there. <laughs> and I'm so bummed so, I don't. So there you go, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> so, I mean, other than that, I don't want people to live the life that I did. And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. And that's, maybe that is the good energy. Maybe it mm -hmm. it's misconstrued. I don't know. I'm not here to validate myself. I don't care what anybody thinks. I have it written down in my doctor's uh, in my doctor's uh, file. Mm -hmm. So no matter what anybody says or, or tries to do or try to disprove, it's there. I don't care. But I do want to make sure that nobody ever goes down this this path that I did. And I did have one person. It was a, it was a girl come up to me and she goes, "I think I am transgender. I think I'm male." I said, "Are you sure?" She goes, well, yeah. She goes, I like to dress like a man. I, I, I don't dress like a typical girl. I'm more. And she goes, I said, do you like men? She goes, yeah. I said, do you like females? She goes, uh, not really. I said, so could it possibly be that you're just a tomboy? And she goes, oh, I never really thought of that. She goes, everybody in school was telling her that she's transgender. Her wow. teachers were starting to tell her she was transgender. She went and told the the counselor that there's transgender. I said, look, I said, once you get on this stuff, you cannot ever be the same. So make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. And sure enough, she's thriving, happy. Thank so you. glad she didn't go down that route because they were really pushing. Let's get you in it. Let's get you in for the hormone treatment. Let's get you in for this and let's get you in it for that. And she would have been ruined. How old so, is this per how old is this person? At the time 14. I I, I don't even have words, you know, and I, before I, I go didn't on, either. you know, there's people in this community who think I'm trying to stop people from transitioning. I am not trying to stop anybody. I wouldn't be here if I was trying to stop people. I'll tell you what, I'd be in a whole other place in the government like just going off, but I'm not doing that. What I'm trying <laughs> to do is trying to help people find their space who need to find their space but not too quickly. I mean, I'm a per I will say it and I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. I do not think a 14 year old should transition medically. Socially is a whole other space, but medicalization and just the stuff that's happened to your body is, is something that, you know, you're not trans, you're intersex, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of same things happening here. And I just don't understand this push to transition. Look, social transition, who the fuck cares? Wear clothes, be a dude, do all those things. But I don't understand how we're acting as if surgery and hormones are not, are not irreversible. They're irreversible. You can never get what you take back. And we're, we're killing these kids by telling them that, oh, just try it on for size. You can get fake boobs <laughs> yeah. if you decide that you don't like it. What? What would you tell a kid you can get fake boobs? Those are not the same as real boobs, by the way. So I'm very angry about what's happening in our community and this push to transition 
children, right? And calling them trans kids and putting them into a space so fast. On some level, they did that with you, right? They said, oh, let's just make you, let's just make you a boy without even asking. <laughs> Here you go, you're a boy. And you clearly were not. You were a goddamn girl. And look at you had to live half your life in that space. So how can we not lay that on top of the trans kids, right? What if we do that to some kid? I agree. And he's all of a sudden like, but wait a minute, I'm actually a girl. I'm not a boy. And my parents transitioned me. You watch. You and I both know that it's going to come down to that. And I'm trying to stop that because it's just going to cause huge amounts of problems for kids, for parents, for trans, for intersex, for all of us. We're not being responsible. We're being very, very, very irresponsible in this space. So so I, that's why I appreciate you, Emma, and I appreciate you stepping up and having this conversation, especially as an older person who decided to live female and, and perfectly fine. And yeah. you have a new life. And, but what about the life that you lived when you were not yourself and nobody seemed to want to help you, right? They didn't, but I really didn't say anything either. But what I right. have had to do was forgive myself for what I did. Cause I look in the mirror and I see, oh my God, I have to shave every day. I have to do all this other kind of stuff every day because of what I did to myself. And I was angry about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm angry at what it did to my face. I'm angry at what it did to my voice. I'm angry at all of this. And then I had to forgive myself. And that's the hardest thing to do. It's easier to forgive someone else than it is to forgive yourself. True. So when I forgave myself, now I have to deal with the things that I cannot change that I wish I could, and I can slowly work on the things that are coming back to me. So I'm thankful that I'm not totally a lost cause, which I thought I was years ago. Yeah. And that's very, very important. And I, I don't really, people, I don't know how to say it. I guess you could consider me a, de a detransitioner. I mean, yes, there was kind of a little bit of the transgender that you could put onto me because I was literally mm -hmm. a female going to male mm -hmm. to, to play a part. And now I'm undoing that. That's right. But I'm not technically trans trans in, in itself because it's like I was born female. I had both genitals. I had little things like this. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of in this weird, like little uh, paradigm that nobody knows how to get to or how yeah. for me, how to get out of it, but I'm stuck in it. So I'm trying to make the best I can with it. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's very important that, myself, my old self, it's not gone. I learned so much like that. It's part of me. If I got rid of it, I would be denying myself that too, because it's an experience. One of the good things that I can say is that I have seen each problem from both sides. I've seen it mm -hmm. from a female's point of view, and I have seen it from a male point of view. So I can actually be a little bit more rational when people are talking to me about different things. And it's like, you know, if, if a woman comes up to me, she goes, oh, I, my husband's doing that. I said, I can honestly see where he's coming from and I can see where you're coming from. And I said, this is probably not going to work out the way that you want it to because they're never <laughs> going to see that. So That's we can right. do it a different way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it does help. It, I, yeah. I can't lie. It does help. Well, I mean, that's you using the magic of what you were given by the universe. You know, being yeah. intersex is not, a, it should never be, a, 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 it should never be a, a downfall or a bad thing. I think you're embracing it, but I think we need to have these discussions around it because we're not the same. Me and you are not the same, yet we are. What you just said, there's similarities, but we're not the same. And 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 so I think why we need to bring your voice into this conversation in the trend. Now, I know that there, I have other intersex friends and they personally don't like to be connected to the trans community. It's completely different because sometimes the trans community uses intersex as a way yes. to say, well, look at, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, but that's not trans, that's intersex. You can't, you can't lay it on top. They're completely two different, different things. So how do you feel about that as an intersex person? How do you feel about sort of being laid into the space of the trans community? Well, first of all, I know I've had a lot of problems with the LGBTQ. I have. In fact, most of the people that have come after me have been in that group. <laughs> However, I love the people that are in it. I have no problem being grouped up or considered a, a friend to anybody in that. Yeah. But I do believe that intersex is a medical condition and I don't necessarily believe it needs to be in the LGBTQ. And I can tell you from a lot of things, when I go to a new doctor, a lot of the times they don't believe me. And so I have to go through a lot. I have to get my, they have to get my, my papers and they're like, 
oh my God, you truly are. So it, they, when I see them, they always want to basically give me the stuff that they would a man. And that makes me sick. In fact, if you put in certain, sometimes if females get certain types of medications, they can get very sick off of that. Mm -hmm. So I have to do that. And I have to make sure that because chromosomally, even if I was trans, my chromosomes are still female. Mm -hmm. My body may look male, mm -hmm. or if I'm a male, my body's still male, but I look female. Mm -hmm. But if you take the wrong medication, you can get very sick. It's mm -hmm. very important to, to see that. And I have known that a lot of times the transgender uh, community has grouped up the intersex and have used some of that, but that's not every one of them. And I, I don't, I, I, you know, but if they do, they do, I, I can't help that. But what I do believe is that what we do as a person can hurt another group if we're not careful. So that's why it's got, you got to do it with responsibility and you, you should just be proud of who you are. If you're transgender, be, be transgender. It's, it's okay. Be proud of that, you know, and that's why people have called me out on this because of the way that transgenders have used intersex along the way, calling me a liar, just saying I was born male and I'm going to be, I'm just trying to use this as a form to make it more acceptable. I don't care if anybody accepts me. I never cared. I never, I, I don't, but what I, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not here to prove that I am intersex by with what I'm saying. I'm here for a message, but I do believe that the way that they have inter used intersex as that has made it harder for me medically. Mm -hmm. It's made it harder for me as a person because I've told people what's going on. I've proved it, but they all they want to do is group me with transgender. And like I said, I have no problem with people thinking whatever they want. I have no problem being with transgender people. I have no problem being with gay people. But I love that. trans. But exactly. But, but, but that's... you can't get it through that. But that's that's, the that's the irresponsibility, and here we go, of the medical world, the irresponsibility of the trans world to not understand the variations. First off, let's just talk about dysphoria. You don't have dysphoria. You are intersex, totally different. But dysphoria comes in many shapes and forms. It's not There's not monolithic. My dysphoria can be different than my buddy over here's dysphoria, right? And so dysphoria can be body dysphoria. It can be so many different types of things. We're not talking about that. We're making trans a monolithic. It's like making intersex sex model like that's not true either intersex people born different kinds of ways being someone so you know, there's just lots of variations and i think this is leading to the problem within the transgender medicine community as if we're all the same and we all need the same dosage of testosterone or the same types of surgeries or you know this is that's why it's getting sloppy messy and irresponsible and that's irresponsible of a of people to say those things to you, right? Or to even yeah. question you. To question And they do. <laughs> what? I'm just They appalled. totally do. I just did a I just did a uh, interview with Ariel and people got on there. Most of them were I mean, I had some of the best responses I've ever had, but I have had a couple people say, no, you're a guy, got <laughs> testicles, got all this. I'm like, how do you know what I have? I've never even met you. <laughs> you know? And so it's like I have this this situation that I gotta deal with. And that can be a problem. Now, here's the other problem with the medical facility. I have a uterus. It is bleeding. I have nowhere to do it, to, to expel it. Sometimes it comes out each month throughout my body in different ways. Sometimes it doesn't. And when I doesn't, I get very sick. I get bloated. Sometimes I even look pregnant and I'm not pregnant. Wow. Um, and so the problem with it is, is I need the bottom surgery, not for gender confirmation, not to say, okay, now I'm finally a woman. But to be able to breathe, to bleed correctly, and I can't get that because it is considered a cosmetic surgery for transgender people. So my you're not my medical insurance, is, exactly. So my health insurance does not pick it up. Um, I cannot seem to get any help through the community to pay to help me pay for this because it's thirty nine thousand dollars, not cheap. And so the but only way that I can get it is if I it. am on. But you, you I shouldn't. Not, yeah, I should no, have it. It should be a, covered by my insurance. This is an actual. So, so I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to say real quick here that there are many trans surgeries that get covered by by insurance now. OK, top surgery is not covered by insurance now as an actual medical condition, not cosmetic. How is yours even considered cosmetic when it's an actual medical, literally medical in your body? That is absurd in itself. What? OK, I'm sorry. I had to just vent there because that pissed <laughs> no, me you're off. fine. You're fine. I, <laughs> this is what I'm feeling, too. And so, yes, technically, um, you're right. It is medically there. But 
unfortunately, the way that the, the way that the insurance sees it, I'm transgender and I will always be transgender. So that is not necessarily a way for me to improve my health to them. It is a way to improve my perception of myself. So it does hinder me. And unfortunately, the doctors are saying, if we don't get the surgery, it could kill you. Uh, you could become septic. Um, you could have all these other types of, of, of issues. You could have uterine cancer. And we don't even know it because there's really no way to test for it. Um, th- you can, but it's pretty invasive and it hurts. So I would much rather than just stick a swab up there and, and test the, yeah. the stuff, but yeah, it, yeah. I don't they have can't. that. So they yeah. can't. So this is the, this is the problem that I live with. And this is the stress that I'm dealing with. And I, I, I knew that I'd have problems on both sides, whether I was a male, I'd have issues or I'd have female. I just didn't get rid of my problems by transitioning or, or stopping mm-hmm. me from living one way or the other. All it does is it switches to another thing. And I didn't even think about this as being a problem. Because I don't really even want the surgery other than the fact that I need it for my health. But it's um, a health but I'd be reason. Perfectly fine. Right. It's not a, you don't want it for cosmetic, which is the reason why no. trans people get it. Trans people get surgeries for cause. I, I only have one surgery, which is a top surgery and it's cosmetic. I only did it because I right. want the world to not see me have boobs like a girl. So that's cosmetic. And if I did the penis, it would be the same thing. Cause it doesn't even work. So I would be getting a cosmetic, but yours is not cosmetic. Yours is actually due to health. Oh gosh, this is making me so mad. You see what happens when we start pushing everything under one umbrella, it becomes very detrimental to people's actual health and, and needing, you know, this certain, you need this surgery in order to sort of possibly even stay alive. Wow. I I can't believe you get your period. That's so mind blowing to me that use and you, and it's, I get sick. Yep. Wow. I get sick every every month for about two weeks. It's not a simple five days and it's done or four days and it's done. It is literally almost a two-week process. And the first week I deal with the cramps, the bloating, the, the just not feeling good. And then after that is when I start having, um, I get really sick. I, I don't want to eat. I, I want to throw up. I have, uh, you know, liquid poop. I have all these other, and then you can start to see the, the, the blood's coming out of it because you can see it inside of it. Um, oh my God. so it's tough. Now, the way that I can fix this, is if I can get on Medicare, uh, Medicaid, the problem with that is, is that I don't qualify for Medicaid. So they do have it available for transgender people too, if they're on Medicaid, but I don't qualify for Medicaid. So, all right, well, we so. got to figure this out. Anybody out there who has any, <laughs> any, uh, no, seriously, any knowledge of this, please reach out to MRM and we can try to figure this out because nope, nope. Sorry, friend. I'm not cool with this at all. Um, I want to, so are you producing eggs by any, do you have ovaries as well? I do have ovaries. I don't know. I can't get in there to see this. So wow. unfortunately that's wow. my hardest thing. I do have a period, but you can have a period and not have eggs. Yes. That's so true. that is possible because yes. it's nat- naturally you're just your body's bur- your body right. is breaking it down if right. you were not pregnant. So I don't know if I have eggs or not. This is why I'm saving on that one percent chance that I might actually be able to get pregnant. Wow. However, even if I don't have eggs and I'm not viably able to produce my own egg, I could have in vitro and have a child right. that way because wow. I do have a working viable uterus. Wow. So it's so fascinating. It fascinates me in a good way, in a very good way. I just think the human body is so, and how nature just make creates these things that, you know, we have to look at intersex, not as a problem, but as a, as a thing that's just sort of happens in, in our, in our biology and in our world. And we need to embrace it more. I don't think we embrace it. I think we also look at it as weird and it's not weird because it's natural. Yeah. It's an actual natural thing that happens, I think also in animals. Does it not happen? In, it must happen in animals. It does. Yeah, it does. It has yeah. to. Yeah. I mean, it's it just seems very no- normal to me that this would happen within the realm of you know biology that eggs can get stuck together or whatever twins, all of it. I think it's so cool. But it but see, wasn't on the cool other part you. to that though, on the other part to that is we're rejecting a lot of biology. We're oh, we're God, accepting the biology we want. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, I'm falling into that. I'm rejected by that. So yeah, I mean, I mean, wow, really? We're actually denied by all. We're not the small group of wing nuts out there, but the majority <laughs> of the world is not denying biology. Those wing nuts aren't de denying it. They can deny it till they're blue in the face. No one's gonna believe it. Right now, everything is off kilter because we have too many woke people thinking that they have to go along with the fairy tale. But soon the fairy tale is going to end. <laughs> soon we're going to see the end of the story. <laughs> I, I mean, I have to laugh because I just think it's absurd that they're trying to dismantle biology. You're a clear example of biology. <laughs> That's a little, right? It's like, I'm wow, you're <laughs> It's so good, my friend. That's why I really respect that you're putting yourself out there and in, in the world because you're, you're definitely going to get hate if you're not already getting it. People are just going to be mean to you because they everyone feels entitled to, to tell somebody else's story. Everyone feels entitled to be, you know, the chief in command here. So, um, well, we're going to end up, we're going to end this conversation, even though, wow, we could probably go on forever. I just want <laughs> you to tell us it, what it is that you want to sort of put out in the world now that, because I know you're not doing this for yourself. I know that you're doing this for a reason and, and, and possibly to help other intersex people or, you know, just, so I just want to know, tell me a little bit about what, what, it, what it is that you're putting out in the world, telling yourself. I want people to understand that we are all individual people and we all have different experiences. And therefore I, it's not for me to judge what you do. It's not for me to judge what anybody else does. It's for me to be a true human being and look at them as my brother and sister, regardless of what they're going through and be there for them if they need it. Right on. I have a big problem with the way that we are indoctrinating and the way that we are grooming children in schools um, and even on television and everything else. I think this is a problem because we're going to have a bigger problem later on down the road. I want people to understand that people like me exist. And yeah, I met, there are so many intersex different variations that they're all going to have a different experience too. So just because I don't share exactly the same thing as somebody else does not mean that I am not valid or that they are not valid. So these are the things I want to educate about. And I want to show people, no matter where you come from in the spectrum, uh, whether it be gay, straight, Christian, religion, whatever, I want you to know that I am a safe space for you. I am here to talk. I will love you just because of who you are. And we can get through it together. I don't want to bash anybody. I don't want to say, okay, well, you know, you're liberal, so I can't be with you or you're conservative. I don't want to be around you. No, that is not the way to heal this world. And if you want to try to pr proponate for something, do that, accept everybody for who they are. And the other thing I wanted to try to do this, if I ever get through this and I ever get the surgery and I, and I can save my own life and then I can help save others, I want to create a nonprofit organization that will help people like me and other people transition as long as they follow the rules and, and have gone through and checked off every box that they are exactly who they say that they are. And for the people that are detransitioning that kind of got stuck into this limbo and believing it, I want to help them detransition and I want to help them feel like they are still special, that they are not worthless, that they are not an abomination like I thought I was. And so I'm hoping that I can create this organization to raise money for this and also help support the people that need it. So, um, and it would be for trans transgender intersex people. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I just want to help people so they don't live the nightmare that I've had to live. Wow. See, that's why you're so special because you care and you know that you've been given an, an opportunity to live this life now to give back. You know, I don't think enough people understand giving back, right? Because all of us take from this community. We all take, but do we all give back? So you're giving back, which, you know, is why I'm connected to, to you. Well, you are by sitting here That's with me today and sitting in aerials and sitting and putting yourself on the internet and talking about your personal difficult story. You are giving back because even if only one person, Emma, if only one person hears you, that one person got something back from you. And that's what that's we, true. we're so obsessed with numbers these days. We're so obsessed with, I have 5 billion followers and I'm blah, 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 and I'm an influencer. That's not, that is actually dangerous. It doesn't matter about how many, what matters is what do you, what's it reaching? Who are you reaching? Are you giving back in a means that says I am helping other people? It's not, we, we're so obsessed with this idea of becoming famous now. And, you know, I think it's, it's hurting our cause 
and it's hurting us to understand humanity and humility and gratitude and all the things that I sort of live around. You know, I live in humility. I try to be, I try to hum, be humiliated on some level sometimes. So it keeps me grounded. So I don't feel like I'm, a, I'm the know it all <laughs> or I know everything. I don't know shit. I actually don't know anything. That's why I have to bring people like you on. So then I get educated. So Emma, you're a beautiful human. I'm going to put all your Thank stuff. You. Uh, tell us your Instagram, your Twitter, your Facebook. My uh, pretty much everything. I, I did it right. Everything is my name, Emma Lynn Dowd. So everything that you can find is that except for Facebook. I think it's Emma Lynn dot Dowd dot one okay. or something, but you can still I'll, find I'll it that way on my website. I have links up and stuff, yeah, but I you know, know what? I do want to leave everybody with this one thing that I truly believe it in my heart. And that is we don't need to, to be accepted by anybody. We don't need to go out there and search anybody else's acceptance. What we do need to do is we need to make sure that they respect us and that's respect us enough that if they don't agree with us, they don't attack us and they just walk away and we walk away amicably and therefore we can just continue on with our lives. So everybody's like, oh, well, they don't accept me because I'm this or they don't accept me. No, that doesn't mean that they hate you. It just means that they just don't accept that one part of you. And if they are that bad, just respect me enough to walk away. Right on. That's respect for yourself. You know, you have to respect yourself before you can respect others. That's actually real. So thank you for that. It's a beautiful message. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Emma's a beautiful soul. Please reach out to her. Um, and also remember, like, subscribe, do all those awesome things that you're helping me grow this channel. I truly, truly do appreciate it. I really, really do. So we'll see you on the next interview.